Welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back, a show that features your business, your services, your products. On Ranger Rob Has Your Back, you are the star. Let Ranger Rob be your advocate. Let's get started. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back. Today I have Mike Myers from the Radio Hope Show. No, not the Mike Myers that we all know from, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, I think it is. Uh, but no, Mike Myers, good friend of mine, great uh, radio show. It's called Radio Hope. He's syndicated with Good Talk Radio. Really fun to talk to and you'll get a kick out of this interview. So kick back, grab a cup of coffee and get ready to have a few laughs. This guy's amazing to talk to. And any, uh, anything you want to know about his radio show will be listed in the description below. So here we go. Let's get started. Here is Mike Myers. Hi, guys. I am Ranger Rob, and this is Mike Myers from the Radio Hope Show over in East Coast. You look beautiful. East Coast? Yeah, you're, well, you're not really East Coast. I'm in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I missed it by a smidgen. Smidgen. You're by the. You're by Iowa. Where is Iowa by anything? Yeah. Boone is by the Des Moines River. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, our subject today was poop. <laughs> is this this isn't actually going out over the air, is it? Yeah, it is. See what I got gotcha? you. What on Facebook? See what I got gotcha? you. Yeah, it keeps on disappearing. I saw your poop thing earlier. Yes, yeah, pretty nice, huh? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. So how how's Mike today? I've been uh I've been up and down. Up and down? It's none of your business what that means. <laughs> Pervert. Jeez. Didn't say a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been staying home? I don't like me right now. You don't like you? Mm -hmm. Have you been staying home? Um, yeah, I have been home all day today, actually. Good job. You're not trying to do any secret meetings at the tavern or anything like that. Oh, no, but I did go see my mommy again. Oh, through the window? Through the window. <laughs> Sorry. So, your yeah. so just to explain for people who are watching, your mother is in uh, assisted living. So yes. you go over, instead of trying to go in there, you go to the window and then you pick a uh, caller on your cell phone and then you, uh, she can see you, but you have to talk in cell phones. Yes. Now I'm trying to find where, where, where is this? I'm not seeing, what are we, where, where do I find this? You won't. <laughs> You're recording it? It's not even live? No, it's not even oh, live. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Jeez. Stressing out for no reason. I thought we'd do something that was unstressful. Uh, no. no, 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 no. The you. stress part is knowing it's going to be live. And now I got to fake it. <laughs> it's going to be live. 66, 66 years old and I got to fake it. That's right. It doesn't work. Just take a Damn blue it. pill. You'll be fine. Shush. <laughs> Gosh. So what's this going to look like? All I see is a little picture of me up at the top of the screen. Oh, well, with, you can extend my hat. it out. There's a little button at the top that makes the whole thing extend out. Oh, this thing? Yeah, I'm get... and, uh, So that's what I have on my screen, which uh, I'm going to uh, take this interview, if <laughs> you want to call it interview, and put it on Range Rob Has Your Back show, and you'll come out tomorrow morning live. Uh -oh. Ranger kind of. Rob has your back. Let's see. Semi, that semi, semi live. Okay. So I, I want to know your opinion on something. Is this not everybody's favorite cereal? Can you see it? Ah. No. Captain Crunch. Your your green screen is well, this is gonna freaking out. Green screen, so it's making it do funny thing. I gotta keep it moving. But, uh, no, when you keep it moving, it's really messed up. <laughs> but I finally got a cat. I love the stuff. Captain Crunch? Yeah. Good for you. you, you don't okay. Like Have a great night. You don't like Captain Crunch? It sticks to my teeth. Ah. 
So you don't like yourself today, huh? <laughs> I I kind of am been a little snarky. You have been. Why is that? I'm tired of people. It it did you happen to watch the uh, the Trump uh, special that some news people are thinking about not covering anymore because it's all lies anyway? <clears throat> no. <laughs> I'm avoiding that stuff this weekend. I've been getting all twitter pated about it. Well, he just, uh, well, that's better than constipated about it. That's he true. just, he just, wow, your glass is a magic glass. <laughs> it's disappearing. You and all your toys. That's kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's okay. freaky. It's messing with my brain. <laughs> so, yes. some, some, some uh, 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 reporter said, to President Trump, so did you threaten New York City with closing them down? He, he said, I didn't threaten anybody. Why do you people do this? <laughs> I suggested it's something we might want to look into. I am just so, folks, whether you like it or not, he still is our president. Yes, sir, Ree Bob. Why don't we get behind him and he's got a mouth. Who doesn't? I don't know what's happened. I mean, throughout the year, think about the century. Is it century? Well, yeah, two centuries. Anyway, uh, century. And how many crazy presidents we've had between the Depression, the World War I and two, and uh, Vietnam War, and Nixon, all those. We've had some crazy people. And, and insane things happen and, and, and unique languages and tough language and and Malvi, and we all managed to get through all that. And all of a sudden, there's Trump, and everybody's getting PC. <laughs> it's like, what is wrong? Like, we are so wimpy. I don't know what's wrong with us. Tough enough. Why can't we handle a tough guy who's kind of tough as far as speaking? Why can't we handle him? I, I don't, I mean, he's no different than any other crazy kind of guys we've had in the past. I think he's a little more bold. Which is great. <laughs> I think it's I think it's I think we need somebody like that in to in today's everything. I mean everything is political. Have you listened to uh uh our big fat soft underbelly Mr. John? No, not lately. Well, he just did a short I think it's only like 6 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This guy just, he just pulls out all the stops. He talks about back in the day, in his day, boys had penises and girls had vaginas. They don't anymore? Well, they still do, but <laughs> heaven forbid we would say I that know. boys have, and I did say penis. You did? Damn right I did. <laughs> you tough, bold guy, you. <laughs> Well, and that's one, of the reasons, Trump? <laughs> that's one of the reasons I like listening to him, because this is a guy who came over from Australia. Yes. And is a, it, he came in through the right channels to become a citizen of the United States. Gotcha. And he is so fed up with a mamby, pamby, pussy white. What? I mean, this, you ought to hear. <laughs> it's, it gets me pumped. It's like, why? Okay. Here, I'm here, I'm on it. Okay. So I'm just gonna share this. So I have a an American flag out in front of my house. Nice. And a Trump flag. Good. Okay. So last night it was a little wet here in beautiful Boone, Iowa. Ah. So my son decides he's gonna go out and unravel Trump because Trump is so wound up anyway. <laughs> and he wanted to make sure that nobody saw him touching the flag at the time, it's like, why, what is the problem? <laughs> I have no idea. No, we had, Are we, you not we decided, allowed to touch a, a Trump flag or something? Well, no, no, what, came, what it came down to, and he's exactly right. I mean, isn't it true that, you know, religion and politics, heaven forbid. Well, religion talk. and politics is actually what founded our, uh, Constitution. Well, but they shouldn't have, evidently. 
Maybe. No, I, the, the, <clears throat> it was designed to have religious um, uh, methodology into our, our constitution, or as far as that was kind of our guidelines for our morals and uh, of, of how people should act, but it was still separated from government. So Which it makes all still, the sense in the, that makes sense. I agree with that. You don't, yeah. don't make a national religion. It's, how did it work from mm -hmm. Rome? No, they just, they just refer to religion for moral principles is what I was looking for. But, uh, yeah. but, it, but that was it. So, and, and even if it isn't Christianity, um, there's other religions that have pretty much the same philosophy of treat others how you want to be treated. So, you could use that same in God we trust for them too, as far as uh, the basis of being good Americans. So chill out people. <laughs> so there. Well, and I would have to say that's, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, what's this whole, I mean, right now, don't you think we have an exciting, I hope it lasts for a while. looks like we get a 30 day extension. Okay. So get this 30 day yeah. extension. Wow. <laughs> Wow. If you have a, <laughs> for more than four hours. <laughs> Are we still talking about poopies? <laughs> no, no, blue pills. So the whole, uh, the whole thing with uh, Trump, you know, hoping that, uh, talking about people maybe being in church for Easter. Okay. That sounds and, good to me. Well, but he was accused again by a reporter don't you think that was uh do you think that was the right thing to do to to give people that kind of hope hope gosh Why not? i hate to tell people giving people hope what's wrong with the guy well Ow. because he wasn't being realistic what's realistic that's a brand so if you want to say realistic it's like well then we're all going to be set, sitting in our houses for the next six months that's the kind of realistic i wish i don't want to hear i'd rather he lie to me <laughs> <laughs> boy i'll tell you what that light coming through that west window is <clears throat> i'm in the west wing ah is you are quite lit up oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm working on it let me tell you I'm, I apparently i'm in alaska and i've got the northern lights over my head <laughs> i bought some uh, tittos tittos yeah it's vodka oh <laughs> Oh, like if you're in Seattle up in Washington, you said you bought Tittos, it's like, oh, 100, 200 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Red light district kind of thing? Exactly. I got gotcha. So, yeah. so, so uh, boy, we talk about messing up that economy. Oh, yeah. That's where I lived. I came from there. No, I mean, as far as what you got to oh. wear a Tyvek suit? Well, How's that work? You know, actually, they had a report in the other day that there's actually porno movies being made with people wearing no. doctor no. outfits and masks no. and stuff. No. True. So true. <laughs> well, they've been doing doctor porn movies forever. Yeah, well, they're making them based on the, the I wouldn't know. stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know. Let's get, let's get back on track. Let's talk about Jesus. I thought we were talking about poop. Do you think they sat around the fire and Peter said, like, that wasn't me, that was Thomas? And Jesus said, I doubt it. <laughs> he probably know the truth. It's like, hey, I, it's don't like, lie to me. It was you, buddy. <laughs> it's like, Peter, you know that was you. No, uh Peter. Of course, Jesus would just say, it was, you know it's not me because I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, well, he, all oh man, I know, God, but he did have body odor. Well, he was a man. Exactly. Because I had somebody get mad at me once when I said, chances are he had BO, he had pimples, he had stinky feet. I mean, he talked about washing their feet. Yeah. But I get he yelled probably, at. Which means Someone he probably, is, probably means he, had, he fluffed too. Fluffed? Fluffed. No, could, no, no. Why wouldn't he be able to fluff like the rest of us? We don't. Oh, jeez. I can just see, I can see him all that? sitting around the fire going, 
Holy fluff. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's like, <laughs> everybody go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's just wrong. We're like, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So, but seriously, though. You brought that up. I did, and I'm sorry. You didn't think I'd go with it. So this morning on my show, it was, don't get me started. Mm -hmm. So do you eat pork? Do I eat pork? Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to. Why? Because it's pork, it's pig. They're unclean animals. Uh, okay. So, does it say that I can't eat pork? Is that wrong? Can I have bacon? Nope. Hmm. Now, isn't that kind of a, a Jewish thing? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not Jewish, so I'm gonna eat pork and bacon. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have a, <laughs> I'm gonna have a pulled porky sandwich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you rebel, you. Well, if you've noticed, can you see the gr the gruffage? Gruffage? Yeah, you are getting. I am getting kind of scruffy too. Well, I'm letting her grow. Oh yeah, as long as you, I can. You try to Santa look like Santa? Nope. You're going to do like the custom like goatee thing? Don't know yet. Oh, Burl Ives, a little pointy thing? I'm not going to cut the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Oh, that should be interesting. How, Actually, how right now I'm being a jerk. I, <laughs> um, are you doing it just to be spiteful to the uh, high command? Not the high command. <clears throat> to people that think that we are under Old Testament law. Old Testament law. Yeah. You know, the Leviticus la, 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 laws. And does that require... Don't eat, don't eat catfish, crawfish. Don't, you know, use two different types of material to sew things or to, to, to make things. You read some of those? There's 600, I think there's 615 Old Testament laws. Okay. But we, <laughs> there's a New Testament that kind of changed all that. <laughs> Not to mention, I'm a Gentile, and so are you. What does this have to do to your with your private parts? <laughs> I didn't say genitals. Oh, oh, those are army people. So, guys, if you haven't caught that, uh, <laughs> that Mike has a show that's actually a, has a theme or a, <laughs> kind a, of a little bit, and uh, but he brings he brings positive and actually humanistic things to it, and that's what I like about it which we're talking about today. I mean, who else would you, uh, would you, you and I sit around and say, would, would Jesus sit around a campfire and fart? I think he'd be like the best at it. Wait a minute. You said fluff. Flop. You just said okay. the Christian F word. You said fart. Okay. So. Repent. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I don't recall fluffing and fart being a bad word. Is it say anything in the Ten Commandments? Do not, don't use my fluff in, 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 in vain or, or fart in vain. Just, Sounds like a hemorrhoid problem. I'm just, I'm just saying. Actually, farts are in the Bible. Really? Where at? Yeah. Uh, what does the Bible say about farts? What does it say? Like a pregnant woman who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near to giving birth. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were pregnant. We writhed, but we have given birth to wind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've given birth a lot. <laughs> that is so wrong. What? Did I mention I uh, make the Ranger Rob booby bags? Oops. What is with this screen well, thing? Well, it's you're, you're trying to overdo it. Why aren't they biodegradable? Why? Yeah. Because they're eco-friendly. So what does that mean? 
means it saves you about three dollars a bag. <laughs> so how? What makes them eco-friendly? Means that they will uh, disintegrate in a landfill. You're serious? Thank you. I was talking to my son about this today. Mm. I didn't know they were. Well, thank. You. I'm going to add that to my. Yeah. To my, any, uh, you probably say that in your ads. They, they disintegrate in the landfill, but they're not. They're not. Um, but not in your hands. Uh, like bio, M&Ms. bio, bio. Um, Freeze. What's the other word? Um, Biodegradable. Biodegradable because yeah. the materials to do that are quite expensive. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of Americans, along with other countries, do not, uh, there is such bags out there, but they don't sell well because people don't, don't want to buy them. It's, they're too expensive. So let me, let me, let me, let me, please, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Would you be willing, I asked my son this earlier, would you be willing to pay more for Made in America products? Ah, I like that question. I've actually asked that same question. And yes, I will pay more. I I just don't mind if I have to spend, uh, you know, uh, $2 more for a box of poopy bags. So be it. If they're American made, uh, you know. I mean, once we got it, once we all got used to American made products in, in, in the level what we pay for all that, I think we'll all be fine. We just learn to live with it. And I agree. And, and no more of this China and offloading stuff and all these other countries either, Mexico and Italy and all those, they're all taking our work, a lot of our work. And that is one of the things that Trump said that enough is enough, right? Yep. Which got him ticked off. Now, who ticked off? I don't think China appreciated it when we said, hey, enough of stealing our technical stuff. You know, they make a, a, a stealth bomber like we do. Does it work? <laughs> I think it has a much shorter warranty. Probably. <laughs> and the postage to send it back mm-hmm. is quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm hoping, you know, um, you know as well as I do, we've all been through lumps and bumps through either personal or through economy or whatever. And usually when you, after it's over, you look back at it, you kind of go, and you probably changed course to do something a little different in your life, all that, and you go, well, thank goodness that happened, or or this and this and this wouldn't have happened. And hoping that if you take this, virus thing we all go okay what did we learn from all this and we learned that social distancing um we don't have to be quite crazy as we are right now but um to realize that it it does exist and one of the things you do to minimize it is one not spit in each other's faces but two just wash our hands more and get better habits and uh and we'll be fine um i can't believe that god thinks it's normal for all of us to be doing social distancing. I mean, because we, we're not designed for that. <laughs> no. And, that's a gr- and that is a and Go ahead. That's a great point. Yeah. I mean, that's, I kind of thought about that. It's like, this doesn't feel natural at all. And, and people want to gather. And I really got, uh, like yesterday, Sherry and I tried to go for a car ride and take the new dogs to a park and just enjoy some of the recreational areas up here. They were all locked off. And it's like, so people were parking on the side of roads and smuggling their ways into the parks. And uh, it, it was like, people just can't exist like that. People need to gather and, uh, and, and yeah. get out. And Americans especially, we're, we're really kind of, we're not outdoor rugged, but we're outdoorsy. Um, yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, this is a real, this is tough for Americans. But what hell was that? But <laughs> if you can smell them, they're too close. So hmm, maybe that's a good reason not to take a bath as often. True. Huh. Look at the money you'll save you. And you'll maybe you won't. I don't like it when people say you smell like ass, though. I don't. Really, <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's a weird statement. I'm sorry. That's weird. That's kind of, yeah. That's just kind of brass. It's brash, not brass. So what I was going to say is, the thing that I've really gotten from this is love your neighbor as yourself and love God with all your guts. And by loving God, and we do love our neighbors, to, re, to, to realize that right now loving people means keeping a distance is weird. Yeah, it's kind of hard. And then plus, you know, uh, he built us these really cool bodies that we have that can, if they don't get some of this exposure, won't find a way to fight back. So and you, you can't have and you can't have babies. <laughs> That's true with the social distancing. Yeah. Well, then you have to be all, everything would be test tube. Unless you're really blessed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that that conversation just went bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my god like your hat is it reading right um yeah Yours i actually is. does yeah good yeah see good thing we're not using facebook everything be backwards now so and j just to touch on this just shortly just a touch yeah just to touch on this you're using zoom this evening and from what i understand zoom is uh is uh cutting people quite a deal so they can do some more things like this. Yeah, well, I um, uh, you can do the free version, which works pretty good. But I actually I did subscribe to it, so I could have a few more options to it. I can run run longer shows and stuff. Oh, and, uh, very expensive. Uh, the I think it was only I can't remember fourteen dollars a month or something. Oh, that's very reasonable. I think it's even better than that. But anyway, so I signed up for it because I was I've done some. Huh. Four sh I've done four shows using this platform and I love it. Works huh. good. Well, that's cool. I haven't I've... quite figured out why well, I can do it, but um, I haven't pulled Zoom into an XSplit show and do a live show with it yet, but um, I can do it. And I still haven't X. Okay. And I have, uh, what's that other OB one? OBS. And I have the cool box thing, you know, the, Elgato. Elgato? The, El, the Elgato 32 button. And I can just push the button and do a... Dog waste is never fun to deal with. Never fun to deal with. You should always be using a quality right. dog waste bag. Listen up, pet owner. Yes, that was right. Are you a responsible... I love it. I just hit a button and they're, they're there. Amazing. It is pretty cool. Mm hmm so <laughs> let's talk about that for a minute and i don't okay. know if you want to go here or not i'm here go for it well i don't know if you want to discuss this i decided not to talk about it on my show um because i didn't have your permission but where are you with podcasting right now i mean things are tight for all of us um we just dropped netflix <coughs> oh um and picked up disney plus Plus Hulu. I'm not quite so plus. the question is you're asking about podcasting as far as us producing them or us accepting new ones? Uh, continuing what you're doing. Oh, um, actually the, uh, we created good, a couple of good. new things and dropped off older things. Like well, um, we don't do paradigm chimes anymore. No, wait, yeah. wait. I'm talking about your good talk radio stream. Oh, um, sure. Um, we may, it's not a cost effective thing. Let's put it that way. We actually make most of our money from the podcasts themselves or our YouTube channel. The radio station is strictly a uh, fun, <laughs> draws funds out of our account. Let's put it that way. So, <clears throat> Unless we find some miracle of it starting to pay for itself, it doesn't make sense to leave it on much longer um, if it's not going to pay for itself. That's just, if you look at the business aspect of it, if you look at the personal side of it, I like the fact that we get a lot of people's shows out there and we help folks and it's good for our products too, the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Um, so the benefits are there for, helping others, helping others get their shows exposed. Um, 
but allows us to get our products out, but it's a total money loss. I mean, so where do you kind of like say, is it fun and I'm glad it's benefiting others, but at the same time, it's sacrificing your own company in a sense, um, if it's not paying for itself, you know, so we're at that turning point, like, what are we going to do? We're not sure yet. If times get tough, times get tight, we'll shut her down, you know, and keep the podcast going. I mean, we'll still do our shows like this one. Um, but, uh, but as far as the radio station and all those people that we syndicate, we'll have to shut it down because there's no money. And yeah. I don't know how to beg for it very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just out of curiosity, how much, how much does it help to promote um, your shit, your poop, your Ranger Rob poopy bags? Oh, those, well, that's are, certainly, are you, if it wasn't for the Ranger Rob soup, uh, poopy bags, it, um, we probably would shut down the radio station a long time ago. Um, um, that was one of the reasons why we created it. It's like, well, obviously radio stations isn't a money maker. You ask anybody who really has radio nope. stations, they all will tell you they're not making money. Um, so we, but we like what we do. So a year and a half ago, we like, well, let's create a product. And so that's what a Ranger Rob Poopy Bakes came along. And we, we don't realize it's not just radio that sells my, my poopy bags. It's all kinds of stuff. It's multi, um, it's social yeah. media. It's, it's this stuff. It's um, uh, the podcast companies that we syndicate. I have a yeah. handful of them that do talk about our product and it does pay off. You're like Tom Goley, yourself, mm -hmm. Jace from the shuffle. Um, I see sales from your guys's areas because of what you do for us. And, and it's greatly appreciated. That is great. Mm -hmm. huh. I do see it. And it does show. I mean, I can see where the sales come from. Um, I can, I can break it down to addresses too, but I can see, I was like, why would anybody be buying anything from Iowa? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I haven't bought more poopy bags. I do want to. Yeah. Well, but you have other people that listen to you that are buying them. We see it. We're really? seeing people in that area, just like, uh, um, for the shuffle and a couple other, I think, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, um, <laughs> I just went blank. There's another guy who talks about our product over in the East Coast, and we see sales coming out of there. Um, um, it's usually in Florida, Rhode Island, those areas, uh, New Jersey. Huh. And uh, it's like, I don't know where else we're advertising in those areas if it wasn't for those two stations. So I do see, I mean, I do see sales come from those, those podcasting groups. Well, I'm glad I asked that question because I need to, yeah. and I, I hope you can continue with your stream. At least your stream gets listeners. Mm -hmm. It does. The one I have, I'm, I'm, I'm the number one listener. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I am too, sometimes in my own stuff, but um, no, but um, it's kind of funny. But, as, well, go ahead. Well, with that, I need to drop your poopy bag uh, spots and I've only got, one, two, three, four, five. I have six different ones. I'm sure you've made more than that. Got a couple more, but I've, I've done so many. I've done more visuals than I okay. have audio lately. Well, the only reason I'm saying that is I would be more than happy to plug that in so those play like at least maybe once an hour. I, no, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, and the I had somebody. Pet, and, and all those pet owners out there love you for it because they are well, the best. Well, I don't know about that. They love me for it. But what I was going to say is Brown Star is, um, <laughs> wow. Oh, Miles McKee, the Gospel Truth Radio broadcast. He. he told me the other day that somebody on the other side of the continent had heard his, his four-minute podcast on Radio Hope. So you never know. That's what my wife keeps on saying. They're all like, oh, nobody's listening. <laughs> yeah. But for me, it, it is it it is more it is a, it is a therapeutic thing. True. 
And and my wife's the probably the realistic person as your wife is too. Because mine is mine's the number cruncher. So she goes, you know, you're spending quite a bit of money every month to run these two radio stations. I don't know where you're justifying it making money anywhere. And uh and I turned her and going, You're right, dear. We're absolutely not making a time. <laughs> But it's fun. <laughs> well, she looks and, well, and, as long as you're having fun and we're not losing our house, I guess we can keep it on. <laughs> well, and when it when it comes to renewal time every year with uh, Spreaker, which actually I don't have to do, but I, it is very, um, uh, what what am I trying to say? Uh, 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 it's easy to use. Oh yeah, the promotion is very easy. Yep. Um, I don't quite understand promoting amongst other. Well, for instance, wouldn't you like to have your message out about your poopy bags and other things beyond the Spreaker community? Oh, definitely. And I think you do that with your uh, Good Talk radio stream, but and my then how? Podcast people. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's time to just go way over the top and do something so totally out there that. You know, you kind of make your own niche and. All right. It's not about being. be big underwear. Oh, shit. I mean. <laughs> I heard that. That reminds me of a band called Striper. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. So remember, let, me, let me throw a question your way. <clears throat> yeah. So what's some of the new things you got in mind for your show in the next few weeks? Ah, oh, let there be light. <laughs> now you look like you're doing a ghost story. So what are you going to do for your show in the future? Will you get some goals? Yes. Okay. And? It's to do my very best to remain upbeat and positive and not fall into the trap of religious arguments nor political arguments yeah both of those are hard ed is doing a great job with the caramel conservative um uh, uh john of the our big fat soft underbelly i'm telling you if, if you look oh jeez, he just doesn't he just he takes off the gloves and just starts going bang it bang it bang folks and if you have an issue, guess what? I'm not going to sit back here. I'm 72 years old and let everything go to hell in a handbasket because I might offend somebody. Well, that's why we got to keep doing this stuff to get people to like, lighten up, get used to hearing this stuff. And if you don't like what you're hearing, turn it off. Turn the station. That's it. Don't like what you're hearing. If you're offended, turn the station. <laughs> Just that easy. We did it for years. They can do it again. Well, and, you know, back in the day, do you remember, you didn't have hot meals at school, did you? Did you take a lunch, sack lunch? Uh, I, we still had hot lunches, we, but I didn't, we didn't, there was no free programs or anything. I mean, we, I, I remember almost every day I'd have two, the same thing, little hot pizzas and chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> over had, and over and over. I think mom sent us to school with, Sometimes she didn't have anything to put it in between the pieces of bread except butter. Yeah, I uh, I do remember my old, uh, I can't remember, it was Hot Wheels uh, lunch boxes and stuff, but, and my mom would make my lunches, but sometimes it was simple. But we never, we were pretty fortunate. My father was, uh, did well. So Good. We were very comfortable, very comfortable family. That's awesome. That's great. We weren't. So it must be nice to be want. entitled. Wow. I don't feel like I was entitled. My dad wouldn't give me crap. It actually, sometimes it's just the opposite. <laughs> when your father and does the well, they will not give you a thing. They go, you go earn it. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. So, yeah, my Rob father, poopy bag. I was actually, my dad was great about it. In fact, get a load of this. When I was a teenager, my dad came from a poor family too, but he's executive at Boeing. So we we that lived is well. Awesome! But I in love the flight. summer, in the summer, I was like seventeen years old, and we used to go to the ocean and go f work, uh, go fishing on the fishing boats. 
up over at Westport and did a little kid commission. And so a bunch of Boeing people from my dad's and stuff would bring their kids too. And we'd all go out these fishing boats, which go out. All, and my dad would say, you know, this would be a great job for you. These little deck hands that worked on the boats. And by God, <laughs> so we went to Westport like a summer after that, went there and tried to apply for jobs and got them. And so um, wow. I worked on the fishing boats for two years in a row. And my oh father my was so damn impressed that he actually loaned us his little 19 foot trailer for us to live in in the summer. So we could, um, you know, we drove by then, but we worked seven nights a week, worked the fishing boats. We, uh, we came in every day, so we didn't stay out like the other fishing boats. And we earned yeah. a lot of money. And we, we worked our asses off. And my dad just thought it was the most best therapy in the world for me. He was so right. That's the kind of support my father would give me. He wouldn't just give me money, but he'd make, give me the means to make something happen. And so when he saw such a good move like that, a good working thing, he, oh my gosh, I'll give you my trailer. Go live over there and work and you'll learn everything, son. And that's, that's when cool. he really kicked it in. Um, yeah. That's and great. so when it came to cars, I had to pay for it with my own money. Yeah. You never gave me anything nope. other than good advice. And that's the way my mom was raising five boys. And if you wanted a car, then you paid for it. You paid for the insurance. Mm -hmm. You paid for everything. <laughs> yep, I did. You should have seen my first car. Real piece of shit. <laughs> what was speak, your first car? Speaking of. My oh, first geez. car was a 1969 Toyota station wagon. Ooh, sweet ride. Um, yeah, it smoked really well. <laughs> yeah. 57 Chevy four-door. Oh, six nice. Banger. I had a friend on one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It smoked. I was 14 when I bought it. I bought it from a cop, and he uh, watched me drive it out of his driveway to my house. <laughs> Nice. I no, say when I, I when I was so. a teenager also, when I wasn't working, so when I wasn't working in the summers at Westport, uh, after school, I'd work at Auburn Mazda, which is a place called Auburn. And I worked at the Mazda dealer washing cars, or what they called us lot boys. And my boss was so cool that when the summer came, he also supported me so much when I worked on the fishing boats that he would give me the summer off from Mazda and work on the fishing boats till the season was over and then he uh, rehire me. And uh, he was, I mean, I had the perfect scenario and I went That's to high cool. school and, and college at the same time. So anyway, I'm, uh, it was really, would you cool. say you were blessed? I was, I mean, I, I was blessed by people, good mentors. Bingo. That's it. Mentors. Mentors. I had, I had really nice, great adults that, and I think it, that's why I try to teach kids is if you if if you're a kid that shows interest in something, there's usually an adult out there that will help you do it. Um, but you have to respect the adult. So when I I found I could get anything I wanted as a teenager if I found the right adult to do it with, <laughs> and they would pave the way for me to get there. And so, because um, I was always uh, an achiever. I never... And nowadays, you're almost afraid to, you know, for instance, I drive for the school. Right. And I miss these kids. That's good. I so much want to. Just, oh, so many things are misconstrued. I know. You're guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. And to want to make a difference. I mean, for instance, there's this one person I know that's uh, just this young lady has tremendous leadership skills. Nobody has really encouraged her because she screws up and then, oh, you're a bad girl. You're just oh, a bad girl. I hate that. And it, it bugs me because the, the wisdom that comes out of this young lady's mouth is just, I'm like, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah. It's like business. It's like, I hate these people who won't try stuff. People see, oh, I've, I've had some companies. I was very successful and I've done things and I have radio stations. They don't realize I also had some big failures. I did a bankruptcy in 97. I lost my ass on a, um, a couple of stuff back in the day. 
Um, oh. I mean, I, I mean, I had businesses that did great. And I had others that failed. Uh, I've been through layoffs. I mean, I've seen shit. I've had failures. And, and every one of them I learned a, a lot from. So each time I just got better. And so you have to have failures. So I hate people that get shot down because they failed. And, and, and then someone really pounds them down for it. When yeah. you realize you look at it as, Hey, that was just a building block. Now keep going. Period. And yeah. Like how many times did uh, Edison fail at the light bulb? <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly the same thing. So um, they just kept going. They just, they, um, other people urged them on. I'm sure there's hecklers and stuff, but you just got to keep moving forward. And pretty soon you find uh, you have to have those failures to be good at the thing you're meant to do in your life. And, uh, and, there, and that is such a good point to be willing to step out into unknown territories with <laughs> podcasting. Oh yeah. That's yeah. I mean, podcasting, you're talking about like you and I, who knows what we're talking about. We might get somebody riled up today because we talked about something that we don't really think of, but you got to be willing to do that. So you've got the guts. I've got the guts to put it out there. We know that we might get hammered a few times, but at least we caused the conversation. I hate my lighting. And I know I just light up your life over there. Cause the conversation. Speaking of lighting up lives. <laughs> Rob, have I told you lately that I love you and appreciate you? No. I really do. You called me a... Even though you called me a call, bitch. You called me a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I meant it in the most Christ-like way. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Gosh, funny. Wow. Excuse oh. me. I don't have anything I can do like that. <laughs> Except I could, I could drum up you-know-who and do the poop doctor thing. I lost my Trump... My Trump thing. <clears throat> Your what? My Trump thing. Hold on. Your Trump thing? Yeah, wow. Trump thing. Your microphone came out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm back. You ready? Crooked Jeez. Hillary. Jeez. Crooked Hillary. China. China. Bigly. I'm really Big rich. Lead. Crazy Bernie. Thank you, darling. I will build a great, great wall. And I will have Mexico pay that wall <laughs> small potatoes so yeah okay <laughs> so with gotta, that you gotta stay from amazon crazy things um what was i gonna say i don't know i forgot too <laughs> I, I i we do have to wrap this up though pretty soon we do my son's making supper and he started they've probably already eaten but i said no, I'm going to drink on an empty stomach so I can get drunk with Rob. That's right. Because you, you, Scribner. So, this, you, you, <clears throat> you, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, we're going to do a show with me before and you ditched me. <laughs> you still ditched me no matter what you said. You ditched me. You know, and I was going to ditch you tonight. I know. I could tell. Do you know why? Because you didn't care and love me? No, that's not why. Well, that's part of it. You but don't know what we're going to talk about. No, that wasn't it either. <laughs> I am trying to clean my pool table off. Oh, you'll it's never been, do that. I've seen I, your pool table. It's always I had got, stuff on it. I got started just before I farted. I got started before the show. Uh huh. And, and actually, when you asked me about doing a show, I was going to say, Rob, no, because I need to get my pool table cleaned off. And I thought, you know, he's going to just totally leave me. He's going to send divorce yeah. papers and yeah. we will not be friends anymore. And sure. I thought, is it really that important to have my, it's a priority. It is. You're, That's you're why okay. I'm done. <laughs> That's why I want to cut this off pretty soon. Actually, you're right. I like these shows that go too long because my uh, listeners go into comas. Uh, ow. You don't even know if you have any listeners. That's true. I may not have any listeners. We may be just talking to each other, and that's okay. So when are we going to do a, a, a morning show? Oh, that's right. Two hours Whenever difference. you uh, quit, as soon as you let me know when to do one. 
You haven't invited me to what day to do it. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. You want more time? <laughs> I can do it. What time is your yep. show? How about, how about, but I don't want to stand you up again. So don't invite me till you're ready for me. <laughs> I feel pressure. Why? Well, because you, because you said you'd do an evening show with me instead of the morning. And you still stood well, me up. I don't like to commit to my evenings. That's all right. Because I love my wife and I like to sit with her and get bored and fall asleep and drool watching movies I don't really care to watch. <laughs> yeah, we do the same thing. <laughs> she watches and you don't? No, it's actually the other way around. I watch the movies, she falls asleep. Oh, interesting. She falls asleep even during Star Wars. It's like, what's wrong oh. with you? Alan Merrill, I love rock and roll songwriter dies from coronavirus at 69. Wow. A lot of people passing away. Yeah, that's happening. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> it can make my shoulder disappear. <laughs> so how many <laughs> folks, now you, you haven't listened to, I know you haven't been listening to the, there's so much to listen to, but Gary each is my, my pastor friend from out of the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Quite certain he had and has COVID-19. Yeah. Luckily, um, we almost thought my son-in-law had it, but he, he was okay. Um, so far, our family's been pretty lucky, but we've been having a lot of trouble with my mother-in-law in the hospital right now. Um, but she, she, she may be going back to... What makes it hard is my last show I did, uh, if you look at Easy Street and you'll see it, caregiving, it's called Caregiving um, Something. It tells yeah. the whole story of what me and Sherry are going through this week insane because first of all we can't go into the assisted living you yep. can't go you can't go in yep. even family you can't go in there yep. visit mm -hmm. then she she has an ailment and gets hauled off to the hospital you can't go in the hospital right it's an 82 year old so you can relate to you having your mom where she, there's no one there to coach no one there to kind of like mom you forgot about this or did you take your pill or uh, did, you know, like we found out she didn't have her oxygen on for a day and a half. Oh, and she's in the damn hospital. Wow. Well, if we were there, we would have said, mom, where's your, where's your oxygen? It's like, Oh, I forgot. You know, it's that kind of stuff. And so you can't go in and assist to get them through whatever, you know, she's not had any, she doesn't have anything serious going on. But now the other problem is with all this moving around, are we exposing this 82 year old to a possible COVID good, good point. possibility and, and being good in hospitals point. and stuff? I, you know, cause they got them all down in lockdown at assisted living. You know that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yep. so we've been just pissed because we can't assist. We can't coach. We can't, you know, you, I'm sure with your mother too, you're saying, you know, that your mom can't hear very well. And you may tell the doctor you need to speak up more. She probably can't hear yep. you. You yep. coach, you help. And so when you can't do that, we don't know. She, she we, When she's talking to doctors, if she's understanding what they're saying, can hear what they're saying, um, she's one to answer questions, but, but not ask questions. And so mm -hmm. she may be getting tests she doesn't need. <clears throat> and so um, anyway, you got me all riled up. <sighs> I'm okay now. <laughs> But but I but I do get it, and yeah, it is I mean, it is it's weird it's again weird. to think that. Well, and, and this is tough. I went and saw my mommy again, and I know it just makes her day, which just gets me all choked up because mm -hmm. just me going to see her, it makes her day. Yeah, and then and I think that we it's can't more, even do that. Well, and then I think it's you know it's more important to get my pool table cleared off. Then to go see my mom who has an aortic aneurysm and can die at any moment. <laughs> That's what a lot of this is. It, it's, it's, it's prioritizing, reprioritizing just life. Yeah. And then uh, In the you big don't realize picture, what you got till it's gone too. Like when we lose some of our freedoms and lose some of the stuff that we've been doing day to day that you don't think anything of it, like going to your, you like to go to that tavern meeting with meet with people oh, to talk man. about Bible issues and it's gone. It's something yeah. we assume you can do anytime you want, and now you can't do it. 
It's like, it's kind of frustrating to lose these simple freedoms. Well, the toughest thing, I mean, I can, I can jump in the car and go pick up, you know, something at the, at the hardware store or Walmart, if I need to go there or, you know, whatever, it hasn't stopped me, but it's definitely made me now. Yesterday I said something in public. That's why I said, I don't like me and we're going to run out of time because I want to stop this top the hour, but I don't have to. <laughs> anyway, I said something to this guy whose wife is a hospice nurse. And I said, do you mind if I come over and I don't touch your stick and you don't touch my balls and we play pool? <sighs> well, I said that in public in front of other people. That was totally inappropriate. True. Totally inappropriate. But funny. But it may be <laughs> funny, but, but I, I, it's you spot it, you got it. We get so upset with my next oldest brother who would say these things. It's like, Bob, come on. What is, and I'm doing the same crap. Yeah, that's where you get to slap yourself. Huh? You just got to learn how to slap yourself. Uh-oh. But that would look weird in public. Um, by the way, my thing's telling me my uh, uh, time's almost up. I think I have this running for an hour. So I okay, can well, wrap we, up our conversation. Let's let's wrap it up. Thank you, you know, sir. I, this has been fun. I know. I know. Uh, so if guys ever knows, we love each other. We're great friends. We appreciate and support each other. Um, I wish your show to do the best. Uh, Radio Hope and uh, links to his show is down below. Check out Mike Myers and uh, his show is in the morning. And I will check out Caregiving Easy Street right as soon as we're done. I'm going to be listening to that tonight, clean it off my table. Yeah, it's only a half hour show, so it's not too long. Hey, Rob. Love you. I mean this. Yep. I love you too. I really do. All right, guys. Say, say hi to your wife. We'll talk to you next time. Bye bye now. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.